Hi, Jason. Hi, Ian. How's it going? Oh, fine. Thanks, Fiona. <laughs> oh, I'm very good because I'm speaking with a legendary bassist. Can't complain. We got bassist extraordinary uh, legend here. I mean, Ian Hill, you're you're still delivering everything, you know, Redeemer of Souls. Now, what do you think of this album, you know, from all the albums you've ever done with Judas Priest? Um, it's, it's funny because, it, you know, when people ask anybody what's their favourite album, they always say the new one. <laughs> of course. And, uh, and it's the same here, but, but this time, you know, I can say it with real conviction because it, I, I truly believe it is the best album we've ever done, you know. Um, it's got uh, it's got just about everything um, that that uh, that a metalhead had had won. I mean, we, we set out to try and portray all the various aspects of uh, of Judas Priest every metal over the years, you know. Um, not just the, the you know the fast and the heavy, but also the lighter, the slower, you know, even the more commercial. And uh, and we've sort of done it with this album. And um, I think it's um, I think it's going to stand the test of time as uh, probably the best album we've done. Oh, this one surely will stand the test of time, you know, Dragonaut, you know, it's an incredible track to start up the album with. Where you guys get the uh, ideas to start up with a certain song like that? Uh, it, well, it, it's amongst us, really. I mean, we, we get a list of songs, and uh, and, and then we, we, we get a flow, you know. Um, what's, a, what's a good idea? It doesn't need to be anything... Uh, it's got to grab you, you know. Whatever song you open an album with, it's got to grab you, you know, right from the start. And uh, and Dragon Ball was one of the songs that could do that, you know. And it was uh, it was just a it's a great opener. And it, it, it worked well, you know. So it was uh, so it picked out it was uh, the number one uh, number one record. Something that's good, Ian, is like the artwork. You guys still keep on delivering the best artwork, you know, ever. Yeah, the artwork's pretty good too. <laughs> Yeah, that's um, that's Mr. Wilkinson who does that. You know, Marty does a great job. He's been doing albums, album cover tours for for a while now. You know, and uh, whenever we do a record, he's he's always the first stop, and he always comes up with a good. You guys have been keeping busy too because uh, Defenders of the Fate got remastered recently as well, and that's an awesome sounding product. Uh, yeah, so they're, they're coming around now, you know, all these anniversaries, 25s and 30th anniversaries of, of, of you know, of the uh, 80s albums. And, uh, I mean, Defenders was, um, was a great album as well. It was uh, it was uh, the last in that line, if you know what I mean, in that direction. After Defenders, we, we did the, uh, the experimental turbo. And then after that, we went with a harder edge, we went down and, and painted, you know. So, um, probably started with with British Steel in 1980, right the way through to, to, to um, Defenders of the Faith, you know, that was the culmination of, of that little avenue, if you like, of Judas Priest. Uh, and it shows, you know, it's a very, very polished album. Why no promo videos anymore? Like, uh, we're, we're uh, missing the Judas Priest promo videos. What's the direction on that? Uh, people stopped playing them. <laughs> uh, it got to the point where... It, you know, the other way, the pros and cons, you know, is it really worth the outlay of doing a, a video? There isn't going to get much outlay. I mean, Judas Priest isn't a commercial band, you know, so they aren't going to get played on any top 40 show. And uh, and, and then, you know, all you've got left then is, is the, um, uh, the more obscure, you know, the more obscure programs that uh, not many people watch, unfortunately. Um it, it, it sort of changed the MTV, you know, all those years ago. They were the ones that started out, you know, first t- t- sticking videos on. Um, and when they went commercial, you know, um, it, it, it all changed a little bit then. It became business rather than, rather than um, you, you know, something that, that they loved doing. It, it, it became more financially um, orientated. And uh, things changed. And, um, you know... Some products that were advertising on the show didn't want to be associated with certain bands. So, you know, a lot of bands were deft out. They were, they were out to the sidelines. And uh, I think it changed from then, you know. So, uh, it, 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 it just as well videoing sort of a live show, you know, putting a live show and then just putting, a, putting that video out. It's just, it's just as likely to get played than a, than a promotional video. Mm-hmm. It takes a lot of time to do and costs a lot of money. And, um, as I say, I didn't get played that much, unfortunately. Let's say, Ian, throughout the years, bass gear on stage versus the studio. 
has there been any changes, you know, from the years to now? Uh, I'll, I'll answer what I think I've heard. <laughs> for the, for the uh, bass gear. That, um, uh, the, the difference between the, the studio and the, and the live version of the song? Yes, correct. I'll tell you, let me try to confirm. Yeah, it's a, it's a little bit better. I've, I've, I've used another sound. Um, yeah, there's a, well, when you're in the studio, you, you get uh, the opportunity to put a lot of production uh, on top, you know, of, of the basic song. Which, uh, which obviously on stage, a lot of it's going to be missing, you know. But um, on, you know, apart from that, when you play it on stage, there's other aspects that take over from that. You have um, obviously the, the, you know, the, the, the lights show and, and whatever special effects you have, you know, the course of performance of the band makes up for, um, you know, the, the, the odd uh, bits and pieces of production that, uh, that you can't reproduce on stage. Um, it's a matter of taste, really. Some people prefer to listen to the record. Some people prefer to see the uh, band live. You know, it's all down to your personal, uh, personal um, taste. Bass gear didn't change much in a sense. You know, on stage, you know, getting smaller because today people try to travel lighter with equipment. What's the world of Judas Priest um, for that? More equipment or the same? Well, it's, it's about the same equipment. But everything's getting more compact. Uh, and easier to stow away, you know. So it, it, it's um, although you've got less truck, you've got less trucks out there, you know. You still got the same sort of uh, production, stage production, uh, because the stuff is very easy to take around, um, it, which which is great news, you know. Um, you can put more on, you know. Mm. Um, it, it's without you know, having to take a whole fleet of trucks on to, to, to do it, you know. It's just living along with the times and the, the way things are modernised, everything gets smaller and more economical, which is great news. Throughout the generations, you've captured so many fans, you know. Now, with Redeemer of Souls, you're capturing a whole new generation. That should be a good feeling for you and the band. It, it is. It's something I've noticed in general, that, that um, there's a lot of young faces in the audience. Um, we, we've just come off a European tour where we played mainly festivals. Uh, these huge outdoor events, and um, the majority of people there, you know, with, with the young adults, probably in their 20s and 30s, maybe even a bit younger, they're older. So, um, you know, it, it's great news that, that uh, the heavy metal, uh, you know, heavy rock in general is, is still uh, is still a popular form of music, you know, and it's still, uh, it's still a favour to many people. And the fact that a lot of them are young, you know, uh, are younger, it's going to hold us in good stead for the future. Not just us, I mean, the, 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 um, the, the, the type of music in, in general. And Ian, one thing that I'm very happy for, is November 10th, you're coming to Halifax, Nova Scotia. Now, that's going to be a big treat for the Nova Scotians of we're Canada. We're really looking forward to coming there. We've never been there before, you know. Um, we, we've, we've seen, uh, you know, we've seen pictures of it, and we've seen it on news reels, we've seen it in films even, you know. And it looks a great, great place, and we really are looking forward to getting there. You know, it's always great to break new ground, and uh, you know, it's going to be a real treat for us. So, on this tour, are you playing a lot of new places as well? Um, not, not a great deal. No, we we, we, we do every now and again get, get to play somewhere where we've never been before. Uh, even in Britain, you know, we, we've played a place called Bradford. I don't think we've ever played there before. You know. Uh, but, but it's generally the, the, the usual places. You, you go where you're popular, you know, you go where you're wanted. And, uh, and that, that generally tends to be the, the same places you could play time and time again. Different venues, maybe, you know, but the same kind of areas. Ian, I think you guys are going to be really popular in Halifax. I just can't wait to see you guys and uh, all the other ones that are going to be coming to this show. It's going to be great. Thank you again. Okay, yeah, yeah, we're looking forward to it. Well, we look forward to seeing you, and uh, thank you again for uh, taking the time with this interview, and uh, hopefully talk to you again in the future. Okay, yeah, let, let, let's hope the, the line will be a bit clearer next time around. <laughs> I, I hope so. Okay, thanks a lot, Jason. appreciate it. You're very welcome. Have a good day. Bye. Bye.